Hello people, it's Gino here from realeverydayenglish.com. I'm working away this week, I'm in Bristol, so those of you who watch this channel all the time, you know that I live in the Greater Manchester area in northwestern England, but this week I'm working away, I'm working in Bristol, um, I'm currently responsible for a site down here in Bristol, as well as the site up in, uh, in Bolton, which is near me. So yeah, I'm staying in a hotel, I've been doing this for the last year now, so I've been looking after two sites. So I've been staying here in Bristol intermittently. Um, so I thought it'd be a good opportunity to show you um, the inside of a typical British hotel room, because this is where I'm staying. I'm staying in, um, there's a chain of hotels called the Travel Lodge, um, and that's where I'm staying. And this is where I have been staying regularly. Uh, sorry that it's, it's quite dark, I'm in my car at the moment. And even though it is still daylight outside, uh, it is a little bit dark inside the car. Um, as you can see, this, this hotel is, is in the middle of nowhere. We use the phrase in the middle of nowhere to mean that it's, it's in the sticks, you know, there's not much around. But over the other side, it is actually uh, a massive industrial zone, which I'll show you um, if I get uh, roomed in that side of the hotel. So um, let's do this. Let's go and have a look at the room and uh, we'll see what English vocabulary I can teach you when I get there. See you soon. Bye bye. So I'm now out of the car. Uh, I'm going to walk over to the hotel in a minute. I'll just give you a little 360. You can see there's a light flashing over there. So as you can see behind me, it's just like a, a barren wasteland. I think, I think they're making a new road somewhere over there. But this is the hotel. And uh, you can see behind it over there, there's a big Amazon warehouse, um, massive industrial zone. You can see there's stacks and stacks of pallets over there. But uh, let's go and check the room out and see what we see. Okay, so this is my room, um, number 106. It's a key card entry. Very few hotels here in the UK still use keys to enter. So you just hold your card up to the door, flashes green, it's flashing, and then we enter. And this is just, um, this is like a, a, a typical British hotel room. So it's quite small, I'm on my own. Um, it's actually brand new, this hotel. The, it was only built last year, so everything is brand new. So it's it looks quite fresh and clean and new. Um, but let's have a look at some of the stuff that we've got in here. So this is the bathroom, obviously. Um, so you've got a shower, which is right up to the ceiling. That's really tall. <laughs> I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to reach that. So to in order to bring the shower down, which is where I need it, because I'm a bit of a shorter person than whoever's put it up there. You need to twist this little thing at the side and then obviously that allows the shower head to slide, slide down the pole. So this is the shower. You've got some, uh, that's ventilation, because obviously there's no windows in this bathroom. So that is like a, a ventilation hole. Um, you wouldn't call it air conditioning, you'd call it a ventilation where the, where the steam is, is, has an exit point so it can get out. Um, you've got your soap dispenser. Now usually when I stay in this hotel there isn't any soap. So let's see if that's the case or not. Oh, they proved me wrong. There's actually some soap inside there. So yeah, this is a dispenser. So it's a soap dispenser, you just squirt it and then you can have a shower. You've got the shower curtain. Now, this is a curtain, yeah, it's a shower curtain. Now, you've also got some curtains here. Um, when you're talking about this kind of curtain, which is near a window in like a, a living space, you don't need to say bedroom curtain or anything like that. You can just say curtain and people will know what you're on about. But if you're talking about this curtain that's on the shower, you'd have to say shower before it so then people know what you're talking about. It's a shower curtain and that's just attached onto this pole um, by these holes here. So you've got holes with like a plastic, um, I forget what the word is, like a plastic washer to stop the curtain from ripping. So yeah, that's your shower curtain. Then you've got your towels. These have got two, you've got, usually you've got a small towel. So let's, let's smell it, let's give it the sniff test. Nice and clean, you'll do for me. And then you've got um, these bigger towels, which are the ones I use for when I get out of the shower. 
and I would just describe this as like a, a towel rail or a towel railing maybe. Um, so yeah, there's my two towels. Let's put them back on there. Um, the floor in here is like a, that's like some kind of lino. It's like a lino sheet that's been stuck to the floor. And then you've got this, you've got this stopper here. Like a, so what that does is it stops the door from, it stops the handle, the door handle from smashing into the wall and putting a hole in this plastic. So that's the stopper down there and that stops that from happening. So the door hits the stopper and doesn't put loads of holes in this lovely wall. This is actually plastic. The walls in here are all plastic. Um, it's kind of like a, almost like a wet room. The only thing with the, the, the only difference with a wet room is that you have a drain in the middle of the floor. So this is the drain. This is where the water drains out, the waste water. Um, if this was a wet room, you'd have plastic walls and then you'd have a drain in the middle of the floor. So what have we got here? We've got um, another dispenser. This one's for hand soap. Then we've got a shaver socket. So you can plug your shaver into there, depending on what wattage you've got. So you've got, um, well, voltage, not wattage, sorry. So you've got 115 volt and then you've got 230 volt. So your 115 volt, I think, is um, for shavers that come from Europe and um, these ones are for the UK. You've got a mirror with a reflection. Hello. <laughs> um, the mirror's nice and clean, as you can see. It's rather big. Then you've got the toilet, uh, which is also nice and clean. And this is the, uh, the flush. So you press this to flush the toilet. So let's do it. And the toilet flushes like that. So yeah, that's, that's what you're gonna get. If you come to the UK and you book a, a standard hotel, your bathroom is gonna look something like that. Although this is, like I said, it's a, it's a brand new, um, it is a brand new hotel. So obviously it's, it still looks new and it looks very clean. Um, what have we got here? So we've got an air conditioning unit here in the, in the roof. Now this is, uh, this has a double use. So you can use it obviously to heat the room up, but obviously to cool it down as well. So you can use it to cool it down in the summer and then heat it up. Right now it's uh, February. We've just turned February. Yeah, we're in February now, I think. <laughs> I'm having to think what date it is. Yeah, we're in February, for just. It's the first It's the first of February today. Um, so it's quite cold outside, so I'll be using this to heat the room, although it does feel quite warm. And then on the side here, you've got, um, You've got a thermostat, so if I switch that on, hear that noise? That was the air conditioning kicking in. And then, I don't know if you can see, but on there you've got a temperature, and this is the thermostat, this is where you can turn the temperature up or down. So I'll just turn that off again. Um, you've got your spy hole. So if somebody knocks on your hotel room door, then you can see who it is. Let's see if I can show you the camera through there. Oh look. So you can see out into the corridor before you open your door. You've got a map of the hotel or this floor. Um, door handle. The door locks automatically. So as soon as you shut that door, nobody can open it from the outside. Although there is an additional lock there, I think, if you want that additional um, peace of mind. We've got another mirror. We've got another door stopper in the floor. So that's just to stop the, the door, obviously. Um, breaking the plaster on the walls. So these walls in here are um, a plastic. This wall in here is plaster. So this has been plastered and then been painted over the top, it looks like. These on the back of the door, these are called a hinge. So this is a door hinge, another door hinge, and another door hinge. Uh, the carpets are blue, like a dark blue colour. Nice and clean, obviously only fitted just a year ago. So really clean. Then you've got my stuff on the um, on the bed. So this is this is one of my bags. This is called like a hold all bag, um, but I've got all my training gear in there for going running and um, my foam roller and all of that stuff that I need to stretch my muscles in the morning before I go for a run. I've got my charger, my mobile phone charger. Got plug sockets over here. Now, these plug sockets have actually got a USB socket as well, so I can plug my charger in here and then switch it on, off, on, off. But I can also take that out of there 
and put it into the USB and then I can charge my phone that way as well. So two ways to charge my phone. And then you've got these light switches on the top here that control the lights in the roof. I usually just have this one on the back of the bed on because it, it makes the, the room just nice and light enough without making it too light. TV on the wall, curtains obviously, um, window. Now the windows, you can't actually open them all the way out because they've got this safety feature on here. Um, they have to do that by health and safety to stop any um, people falling out of the window by mistake. Um, so yeah, it's quite windy. I don't know if you can hear the wind out there, but it is really, really, really windy. So I'll shut that window again. Yeah, so we've got um, you've got the TV, which is they're like a smart television as well, so you can connect your mobile phone to them. We've got a couple of spur pillows up here, just in case you know you want another pillow. I've already got two on the bed though, so that should be enough. So there's spur pillows. Um, we've got some coat hangers. Now the coat hangers in hotels, and I'm sure they do this in all countries, but the coat hangers are always these kind. They don't have a hook on the top because I think if they had normal coat hangers with the hook, then people would probably pinch them or nick them or steal them. So uh, steal, nick and pinch are all words for the for the word to to um, to thieve something. It's like um, it's been it's theft, isn't it? So rob, pinch, steal. Uh, Nick. Nick is like the, the British English equivalent. If somebody nicks something, it means they pinch it. Nice little chair in the corner. Uh, yeah, I use this chair. But I'll go for a run in the morning and then when I come back, I'll sit on this chair and meditate for a few minutes, see what's going on. Um, you've got a bottle opener on the side here. That's in case you've got, I don't know, maybe you've got a bottle of champagne or a bottle of beer you want to open. Um, this is like a little sign that you can hang onto your door handle if you need some more towels or tea and coffee. You just hang that on there, but on the outside, obviously, so the hotel staff can see it. Um, what else have we got? We've got the remote control for the telly, so you can switch the telly on without actually going over to the telly. Um, we've got two cups with two teaspoons inside. You've got a miniature kettle. Miniature is another word for, for small or mini. Miniature kettle, which isn't plugged in, but. Then we've got some sachets of coffee here, and um, you've got some of these little long life milk. Tastes like fresh milk, but it's not. I disagree with that statement, actually. I don't think it does taste like fresh milk, but they're welcome to say it if they want to. Uh, we've got a lamp, which can turn on and off. I thought it was going to be able to turn it up, and, but you can't. Um, this is my aftershave. Aftershave is like perfume for men. I know in some languages that they use the same word for um, both men's aftershave and women's perfume, but in English we don't. We, we have different words. So this is my aftershave. This is really cheap aftershave, actually. Um, it's bought from a, a supermarket chain over here. It's only a five or a bottle, right? And... You want to hear the good comments I get when I go to um, when I go to work and I've got this on. Everybody's like, "Oh, what's that? What's that aftershave you've got on, Gino?" But it's cheap, five pound aftershave from Lidl. That's what it is. So yeah, I think that's enough for today. There's your typical British hotel room, and this is what I'm going to be calling home for the next two nights. So I'm going to get myself a shower and I'm going to go and get some food because I've been working all day and I'm hungry. Until the next video, take care, God bless, ciao ciao.